Well everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at the iPad 7 generation and see which specific iPad we're seeing if this specific iPad is still worth buying in 2023. Now the first thing I'll definitely tell you is, I still think this is a pretty powerful iPad, I think it's still fairly capable. However, with the latest iPads, it is pretty insane how much better those iPads have gotten than these specific devices. So I will kind of leave that caveat in there that the newest iPads are definitely better. Like this one is still good, but the iPad 7, you know, the iPad you know, 10, the iPad Pros, the iPad Airs now are very, very solid iPads. So I will leave those linked down in the description. You can get them from there. You can help support the channel at the same time. Now, starting off with the outside of this iPad, what's very fascinating and something a lot of people forget about is that this was the first time we saw a, I would say, a pretty big, you know, difference in terms of the design on their base iPad lineup, probably since the iPad 5. So there's only been like two historical massive changes, I think, from the base iPad lineup at this point. So it was the iPad you know, 5 and it was the iPad 7. Now it's still like the iPad 9 and iPad 10, but this iPad slimmed down the bezels a little bit more on the side and it gave us a bigger display, which I actually loved a lot. Having a bigger display like this iPad is actually a very cool thing and I'm actually really happy they, they brought that ultimately. Now you do have that front facing camera, which is great. You have that touch ID sensor on the bottom, which is also really cool. So the bezel and everything is not really a massive amount of bezel compared to the iPad 9, but definitely compared to the iPad 10, it's an older design, but it's really like not that big of a deal either. Now on the bottom, we have a lightning port. You have a headphone jack on this phone too. And on the back, we have the standard aluminum back on these devices. Now basically all these iPads back then had a single camera setup. In fact, basically all iPads now almost for the most part have single camera setups as well, including the iPad Air the iPad mini, the iPad base models, the only ones that have multiple cameras are the iPad Pros, so you're really not missing out on too much in that standpoint. In the outside though, I mean, it's a pretty bare bones iPad. You still have Apple Pencil 1 support, which is great, but beyond that, like, you don't really have a crazy amount of features that we kind of have nowadays. I will probably also add that, you know, if you want to go ahead and use the Apple Pencil 2 or maybe some of the latest accessories, you may not be able to utilize those on this iPad, as well as the fact that a lot of iPads now have USB-C, as well as like 120 hertz promotion and different things like that. You are missing out on a lot of things in that area, but I would still say if you're looking at an iPad 7, you already know what you're getting into. Like, you know this iPad's not going to be like the most expensive top tier iPad of all time. So it's really not that big of a deal either. And I think it's totally understandable in that standpoint. So in terms of the outside, that kind of covers it up here. Now in terms of the camera setup, like I mentioned before, on the back, you had an eight megapixel standard camera. And on the front, you had a 1.2 megapixel standard lens. Now, this is what I'll definitely tell you about this camera setup. It is nothing to be extremely, like, it's not something to be using every single day, but I do like having a camera setup on my iPad. If I'm in a pinch and I need to go and take a bunch of photos, let's say I'm a student and I want to take photos in the classroom of the whiteboard or whatever, well, it's really nice having an iPad right there where if I'm already taking notes or whatever, I can just quickly take photos right there and it's a super nice experience. Like, you don't really have to worry about anything. But when you actually do have to go ahead and, like, pull out your phone and take photos, photos that way, you are getting a much better camera probably on your phone than on the, your iPad. I would say that this camera is probably in line with something like an iPhone 6. So you're really not going to be getting as like that great quality photo or video at all, but it's still okay. Like if you need to go and quickly use a photo or quickly use a camera to take photos, you know, as quick as possible, it's nice to have one of these things kind of laying around that we don't really have to like worry about things too much. But as I mentioned, you know, you're better off using some other camera. This thing, you know, can shoot 1080p on the back and 720p on the front. A majority of phones nowadays, and I mean like almost every single phone nowadays, can actually film in like 4K at 60 on the front and the back. So that's kind of another area where this phone just really isn't doing too well. But I guess that's like kind of understandable, but it's like one of those things to keep in mind. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up, you know, here, for at least the camera setup. Now in terms of software and longevity, this is also one of the areas of the specific phone that I've been kind of, you know, hesitant about because it's pretty much in line. It has the same internals almost as the iPhone 7, actually more so the iPhone 7 Plus. So the problem here is that, at least in my opinion, you're probably better off getting something like the iPhone, like an iPad 8. That way that thing still has a newer chipset. This one, like you have to keep in mind, the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, those phones are unsupported with software. Now I like how this thing is still getting software support. I think that's really great. This thing can just last a very long amount of time, which is really cool. But the issue that we kind of have in hand is that if you wanted to, 
you would basically have to go ahead and, you know, kind of pray to Apple that they just keep supporting this thing forever. And I don't really think they're going to support this thing that long. I mean, it could be another year. Let's even say it gets iPad OS 17. The chances of it getting the next version of software next year, it's not really that high. So I would probably recommend if you're somebody who owns one of these iPads, keep it for as long as you can. But the software and the longevity portion is the one area where it just doesn't really take too much sense. It just doesn't really make too much sense to me. Like you're better off buying some other iPad, buying some other one that's newer. It doesn't make sense to buy this iPad right now if you're planning on keeping it for many years. If you plan on keeping it for many years, then that's okay. But if not, you're probably better off buying something like an iPad 8 or iPad 9 that is still supported with software. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. Now in terms of the performance side, this iPad does have that Apple A10 Fusion chip inside of it with three gigabytes of RAM. Now the good thing is with this iPad, it's still actually a fairly powerful iPad. And I remember when the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus came out, I think it was like a year or two after that the you know iPad Pro 10.5 inch came out and that one also had that Apple A10 Fusion chip inside and it was a very fast iPad. Now I bring that up because only a few years later, the base iPad ended up getting that top tier chipset that was on those most expensive iPhones and iPads at the time. So this is still a very important iPad in that standpoint because it is a 2019 device, like it's four years old this year. But I will tell you that in my opinion, it is a pretty okay performing tablet. Like any device that has the A10 Fusion chip inside is fairly decent. Like it's definitely not going to be a slow device in my opinion. There's definitely better devices out there, especially for the dollar per value standpoint, especially for how long these next iPads are going to last. But I still look at this iPad and I'm actually pretty happy by the amount of performance that you're getting on this specific device. So first of all, if you're a student, you know, if you're doing basic things like, you know, just taking notes and things like that, then for the most part, you're going to be totally okay. Like this is going to be a very, very good iPad for taking notes. You still have Apple Pencil 1 support, so you can still take a lot of, you know, physical notes like that too. This thing still also has a lot of support in the future, basically for a lot of applications and stuff, even if it's not going to be getting iPadOS support, all the applications are still going to be updated. And I've done a lot of testing on the A10 Fusion chip, even last year and this year, and it's still good enough for the most part. But it does slow down quite a bit if you're trying to play, you know, like heavy intensive applications. A big thing, like if you're, you know, split screen multitasking a lot, the iPad will tend to heat up a little bit more and different things like that. But I do think for like a casual iPad user, especially if you're just like watching videos and maybe like taking notes and whatnot, like I think this is perfectly fine. But if you're trying to replace your MacBook that's supposed to be like a coding machine and playing heavy games and whatnot, I really don't think this is going to be the one. But if you're doing light type of applications, I think it should be good for the most part. The battery is silent though is also pretty massive for this iPad. You have an 8,827 milliamp hour battery and that is a massive size battery to have on an iPad like this. Like, I mean, to be honest, this thing isn't crazy powerful. So you are going to be getting a very solid performing battery life from this type of iPad for sure. So to kind of sum up this whole entire video, what I'll definitely tell you is, I think the iPad 7 isn't necessarily worth buying. Like I, it wouldn't be the first iPad I would recommend buying right now. But if you were planning on buying an iPad, you know, I would recommend going for the iPad 8, maybe an iPad 9. But you know, if you plan on buying this iPad and keeping it for maybe two years, I don't think it's a bad choice. It just depends on how much you're going to use it. Like if you're going to use this like every single day for the next year or two, you should be okay. But if you want to keep a device for like three or four years, I'd probably recommend going for the iPad 9. That would be a way better iPad than this thing, but that kind of covers it up to be honest. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.